he was like a school unto himself. And then uh, one of the current great so New Orleans bands, we're going some, the greatest one if, maybe if, ever if, is uh, Henry Butler. I want to save so anything if I'm going on a song basically those five who I've studied. Minute, you can tap and, uh, or something. Okay, um, two minutes let's pause just one moment. I mean, I'm sure you do some editing. Yeah. Right, like you have to edit that out where I have to move the mic. I probably will. Let's pause just one moment. Okay. George, another uh, pianist composer from Montana, about which you uh, talk a lot about, Philip Alberg. Sorry. Back up for a second. All right. George, another pianist composer about which you speak a lot from Montana as well. Philip Alberg was here, and he was talking about the influence on his career from growing up or spending time in a small town in Montana and how it still influences how the people um, in a small town are always there. And I imagine when you go to eastern Montana and to some of the places uh, from your home state, too, that uh, uh, you're really well received. And uh, how is that, uh, what is that feeling like to go back to some of these places in Montana and do shows? Well, it's, it's something to go back to where the songs were about. It's uh, just something else to do that, you know. And... Uh, there are people I know in Miles City when I was four that I still, you know, uh, re-met back in 83. And uh, I think my babysitter when I was four is still around. She's 95. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's something else. Uh, Philip Auberg is like... Uh, I always tell people he, his music is just wonderful. I mean, if you listen to it when you're driving in Montana, it's then it's beyond saying things like wonderful about it's just a whole nother experience he really captures it here i don't know if i heard, have heard anything captured as well as he captures montana for example there was a one time i was driving from mile city uh, billings to mile city and i i said i've got to hear side for some reason i got to hear that second song on side two of high plains mm -hmm. And I played it, and then I looked at the title later. I, you know, kind of forgotten the title. It was called The Big Open. Right. It, so it just really... And then I later, he mentioned that that song was about that space it was in. So it wasn't me consciously saying, well, let's... He says this, this is what it's about. Let's check it out. It was just I had to, I had to hear it. So then I went to all the other places he wrote about, saw Marias River, and then listened to the songs right there to check it out that other way. And he really captures it. It's like... Uh, um, that's absolutely my favorite melodic pianist by far. He's really the only melodic pianist I listen to. And he's not really a direct influence on me. I, I like doing his songs. Right. Vince Guaraldi, the pianist who did like, Cast Your Fate to the Wind and the Peanuts soundtracks, he was the same way. I don't really play his style either, but I like doing his songs. Right. Whereas, say, James Booker, I really don't play his songs, but I use his language. So it's kind of whatever, you know, just, I just let it be whatever it is. You've got a lot of rhythm and blues influence in, in, your, in your playing. and uh, Where does that come from? Uh, almost all James Booker, some Professor Longhair, and quite a bit Henry Butler, a bit from Dr. John, a bit from Alan Toussaint. It's all the New Orleans pianists, and that's an accident, too. You know, I didn't know Henry Butler was from New Orleans when I heard him. I just said, that's the guy. You know, i got to study this player forever. Um, it turned out he was from New Orleans and he'd learned from James Booker. And when I, I loved Professor Longhair very much. I heard James Booker, I didn't know where he was from, and it turned out he'd learned from Professor Longhair. So it kind of all makes things make sense in this world sometimes. They probably do all the time. It's probably when they don't, it's just that I don't think they do. <laughs> so. Tell me about, uh, about your guitar playing. I understand your. Uh, uh, doing a lot more solo guitar work, and um, are there recordings uh, coming out soon with uh, some guitar playing? And uh, tell me about the the slack key influence. I understand from the Hawaiian Islands. Well, there's not really Montana traditional guitar like there's Spanish traditional guitar, so I've had to kind of make up a style, which is a little similar to the melodic piano style, like on the rec records, um, and the. I've used the Hawaiian slack key language a lot. Uh, slack key is Hawaii's name for solo guitar, like flamenco's Spain's name for solo guitar there. And it means slack some of the strings down to different tunings. And when I first 
or it's slack key guitar. I've never been in Hawaii, and so that feels like Montana. It feels like spring and, you know, love and water. I didn't even know it was Hawaiian. So it sounded like where it was from, but it also sounded like where I was from. So it's always a real funny thing when I tell people that I use slack key guitar for Montana. But Montana is very much like the Big Island of Hawaii. The Big Island is where slack key guitar began around 1830, and it's way off the beaten trail. Very, very, very much like Montana is. You know, every, people are aware of it, but, you know, it's, it's off the trail. Are you playing some guitar on your current tour through Montana? Yeah, I always play at least two pieces. Um, it can be three or four occasionally. That's great. Well, the tour consists of a, a bunch of Montana dates, and I uh, uh, wanted to mention certainly a few of those that are coming up uh, real soon here. On May 2nd, you'll be in Shelby, uh, May 4th in Great Falls, the 6th of May in Anaconda, uh, in Bozeman on the 8th, Helena on the 10th of May, Lewiston on the 12th, and from the 14th through the 22nd of May, you have a tour of um, the eastern part of the state uh, from Haver uh, through Billings and dates in Glasgow, Glendive, and Miles City as well. And um, all of the concerts benefit the food banks. How did that come about? Um, just wanting to give as much back as I could because I wouldn't even probably play music without Montana so I just really don't want to deal with the money part here you have to sometimes but there's some things like if you have a good friend they don't have to pay you to be your friend right. or something like that you know um, it's kind of like I just um, plus they had that drought for seven years right and um, you know, uh, I've not had money. I haven't done it for a long, you know, I've, I've never, I've really been penniless very little, but I've had times where I didn't have anything and I went to some place and, you know, they had a meal. So I, I've, it hasn't been a whole lot, but it's been, you know, a little bit and I know what it's like. It's, oh, it's, it's nice that there's some place. And all these food banks provide that. They provide anywhere from soup kitchens to somebody can go get cans of food or something, so. Right. Well, your contributions to the food banks and to Montana have been great, and I uh, thank you for that. No, oh, thank you. Will My you play, pleasure. Will you play some more music for us? Yeah, I'd like to do a Philip Auberg piece. Speaking of Philip Auberg, uh, this is a piece of his High Plains album, which is a great solo piano album. It's his first one, and uh, the piece is called Spring Creek. And if maybe go into the song. We already did our intro. Yeah. Right? yeah. Let's roll them.
This is Musician Spotlight, and my guest tonight is George Winston. And uh, thank you so much for being on the program. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for it's, the opportunity. It's really great to have you back in Montana to share some of your music. The uh, current concert tour that consists of a total of 13 Montana cities is a benefit concert tour with a portion of the proceeds going to Montana food banks. And uh, be sure to check uh, for the concert in your area. Coming up in the next few days, we have a concert on the 2nd of May in Shelby, Great Falls on the 4th, Anaconda on the 6th, Bozeman and Helena on the 8th and 10th, respectively. And there are more tour dates all the way through the 22nd of this month. I noticed in your itinerary that you uh, spent some time in Japan as well. Huh? Yeah, just before. I do every year just before uh, Montana. Or Colorado is the other tour I do in May. It's kind of my reward. Colorado, Montana is my reward for working hard. Well, it's great, and thank you very much for coming and sharing yeah. some of your music Appreciate with us. Appreciate it. Would you like to play a, another song for us to uh, conclude the program tonight? Yeah, I'd like to do a medley. Um, the way I play this piece is influenced very much by the late uh, New Orleans pianist James Booker, and he was the first one that to take uh, rhythm and blues and soul and gospel and Latin and funk and all of it and make a solo piano style out of it. And uh, the piece is from 1959 by a group called The Clovers called Love Potion Number no. 9. He didn't play it, but I basically just, I think when I, I think of pieces in terms of James Booker's language, it's just how I think of if I was going to play like, say, Summertime or anything, based almost anything, I would think of in terms of that way of playing. This is also influenced some by Henry, Henry Butler and Dr. John, also both from New Orleans. And uh, if time permits, I'll uh, go into Last Date by pianist Floyd Kramer, which is from 1960. Okay. Why don't we check our time real quick here and swap tapes and... <laughs> 